So let's move down to Class 2A, Division 1, where the Crawford Pirates continue to get it done. They beat Riesel 41 to 3 last week in that rematch of uh, district rivals. Um, so Crawford historically, going back to uh, when Delbert Kim was there, before Delbert Kim, a long stretch. It was uh, a man by the name of Robert Murphy as their head coach. Uh, let me tell you, DJ, Chad and I could tell you some Robert Murphy stories. Uh, he's an interesting cat, uh, to say the least. <laughs> um, but um, Crawford has always been kind of about the team. You know, they're always team, 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 team very focused on the team they don't send in stats for stats plus they do send in on uh super syntax nominees but um so my question then is is the x factor for crawford is it an individual or is it some other phase or aspect of the game crawford plays toller this week um They've got individual guys that right. I feel are just incredible football players, just from the perspective of, of the level that they play at the level of football that they play um, to, I can't give you a, a name though, to say that it's this one person mm. that is give the reason for all their success. Obviously their defense is like the thing that we talk about the most because it's, um, they have a really great defense. I mean, up until when they played Marlin, they hadn't allowed more than like two touchdowns. Yeah. Um, that season. And then they've still been doing really great. I mean, yeah, I lost count of how many teams they shut, shut down this season, like shut out, just did not allow mm -hmm. a score. And, um, but I think that's their X factor. It's that they are a team. Like they, they don't give, to you know it's easy for the small schools to just have that one guy that does everything for them but I think their reason they're so good is that they have a lot of the kids are bought into the system of being a team yeah and I think yeah, that's that defense really works in concert with one another I know I've talked to Jacobs uh this year some and uh and he would say that uh you know each guy really has to do their job and, you know, the D line is getting that push and linebackers are kind of flying around and making plays and Breck chambers and those guys uh, on the corner, you know, in the, in the secondary are, are guarding their man. And, and then they swarm to the ball too, you know, I mean, it's, it's a team tackling kind of mindset. And so Chad, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to say that's a great point by DJ because I've covered a lot of 2A football. In fact, the majority of the games that I've covered this year have been 2A, and you do see a lot of situations where, you know, uh, a quarterback, you know, like um, like uh, Newt Shornak at Bosqueville will just kind of take over the game. And, you know, Bosqueville, Rosebud Lott, it was like quarterback versus quarterback, and which of the other teams could have a guy come in and make a difference. And that's why Crawford and Mark uh, and some of our other 2As that went further – are, are, you know, went further because they have multiple guys. Now, the, the X Factor guy I'm going to give you for the Crawford Toller match is a name. I have a story behind it, and it's okay. not a Crawford player. Okay. It's Toller running back uh, Peyton Smith. I think it's Peyton Smith. I can't really remember because the game I covered then was against Marlin, and the Marlin broadcaster decided that Peyton Smith – reminded me of reminded him of Peyton Hillis from Arkansas from a few years ago so the entire game he referred to him as Peyton Hillis right so <laughs> no, that's I don't think it was Peyton Hillis no but uh, yeah but that's the the entire game that the classic Marlin broadcaster was 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 just referring to this kid as Peyton Hillis unabashedly and he, even though he knew that wasn't his name right <laughs> but uh at we any need to rate, do a story on this Marlin broadcast. Oh, we have He's, to. We have to next season. I, I can't even tell you. Just sitting in the booth with him at the uh, in the Trojan Stadium during the first round, mm -hmm. it, it was crazy. It was like mm -hmm. me and I don't remember what publication this other writer that was sitting next to me was from, but we were just looking at each other during the game like, <laughs> this is the most exciting game that we've heard all time. <laughs> we weren't even paying attention to it. It, it sounds happened. like he's got a little Gus Johnson in him. Like, you know, everything's awesome, you know. 
Well, no, but he also just like, he just fans it in, in a lot of ways, you know? And like, he just kind of emotionally reacts in, in that way, but he knows it, he knows his stuff. My, that my dad went with me uh, and spotted for me at the, at the Marlin Toller game. And what really got him was uh, the, the, the broadcast was so upset that Marlin had gone for it in, in the first quarter on fourth down. And, and in the second half, they line up to go for it on fourth down. And he says, well, here, here they're going to run this so-called play you know, <laughs> he's like giving up on it before they even snapped the ball. So <laughs> what were you going to say about Peyton Smith though? Uh, Peyton Smith, number 40 for Toller, uh, sophomore, but a big, fast running back. And, you know, they just pounded people with him. He had over 2000 yards when they played, uh, uh, they had, he had 2000 yards for the season. By the time they played Marlin two weeks ago, I'm sure he's up to uh, in the neighborhood of 2700 this year. So, you know, that Crawford defense, if they can hit him behind the line, which they're going to have to do because he gets going fast enough by the time he gets, you know, a yard or two downfield that he's really hard to stop, right? So uh, he's the type of guy that they can produce a 15-play drive with just because he's. if you don't hit him at the line, he's going to get three or four yards, you know, yeah. uh, per, per play just by getting hit at the line and falling forward. So – Crawford has always been very ground oriented going back again, decades. <laughs> um, uh, that said, I do feel like they have a pretty good passer uh, right now in, in Luke Torbert. I think that's an X factor. Um, I know Steve Boggs covered a Crawford game earlier this year and, and was mentioning, uh, you know, out of the Crawford teams he'd seen that he felt like, you know, they were as proficient passing as, as he'd seen them. Um, but, you know, I think DJ made an excellent point earlier, even though they are all about the team, you can't do it without some good players. <laughs> I mean, uh, and like Chad, that 2004 Crawford State Championship team that you covered, they had good players, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago when they made their deep run, they had really good players. And so, I mean, they still have some hosses, you know, like Breck Chambers, who's just kind of a do it all guy. And I think we'll have a chance to either kick or punt in college. And Crawford's never had a lot of college football signees. They're just not big kids. They're just tough two-way football players. But Cameron Walker is another one who's picking up offers from smaller schools um, and, you know, and is a ball player. You know, <laughs> that kid can play. So, um, you know, I think if – if Breck and, and Cameron, those guys would be my two X factors if they can kind of show out, maybe along with Luke Torbert on the offensive side.